Well, today is day four of working on the shop, and getting the floor ready to be sealed. We're gonna use an epoxy coating. It's taking us three days using the grinder to work over the floor and uh, take off a lot of concrete, make it porous, so that it should be a good surface to be able to seal. Let's take a look at it. Okay, here's how it's looking now. There's Catherine. She's doing a good job. She's sweeping up all the excess dust. We're getting ready to power wash it. And that, I don't know how long that's gonna take, but once we power wash it, let it dry. If there's a few cracks that I wanna go back and uh, put some sealer in, and then we're gonna put some epoxy on it. I'll show you what it looks like. It's a little warm today inside the building. Today's a monumental day. We're gonna be putting the epoxy coating on the floor of the shop. Now, most of the DIY videos I've seen show an individual doing a one or two car garage, not something that's as big as this. This is 3,000 square feet. So I ordered all my product after doing a lot of research and I bought it from coloredepoxies.com. Let me show you the components we have and uh, the process we're gonna use. A Couple of little notes to make. You got two sets of shoes that have little spikes. And these are uh, extra handy for being able to walk on the epoxy without leaving footprints. They leave there's little dots. And because the epoxy is self-leveling, uh, after you walk on it, it will fill in those little holes. Uh, let's see, we've got our container ready and both of our brushes ready. One to uh, do on the edges and then the 18-inch one. To mix the material, I'm using a drill with a little paddle here that's made for mixing chemicals or liquids, I should say. Uh, one thing to notice on my drill, I've got it set on one for a slower speed. You don't want to mix your chemicals at a higher speed because it'll, it'll whip them too much and add air and create bubbles within your epoxy, which you don't want. On the buckets that we're going to be mixing it in, we chose a two gallon container from Home Depot and I've got it marked at the one gallon for part A so that when we start adding part B, it'll be another half gallon and it comes up to the 192 ounce mark. So that way, uh, when you're using a portion of a gallon or in this case, a five gallon container, you know how much material to put in without having to pre-measure. We can just use the same containers over and over to, uh, to mix up the material. We've got two buckets set aside for that. All right, we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna get after it. A tip that uh, they suggested I've seen before is to use some duct tape after you put these spike, spike uh, little, uh, soles on your shoes. These could loosen, these uh, little straps could loosen up. So to run some duct tape over the top of your shoe, twist it up to roll on the bottom. That way it doesn't get in the way of the spikes. And that way you don't have to worry about your shoes loosening up when you're walking across the epoxy. We've got the two rooms done, at least with the first coat. And we put the grit on top. Still got a ways to go. We're mixing it up about a gallon and a half at a time. And I don't think we would want to mix it up any more than that because by the end of that gallon and a half, it's starting to set up. But it's coming along. And uh, one thing I would advise on these uh, spiked shoes to use a little bit of uh, Loctite on the nuts. Uh, we had one that uh, the nuts started coming off and that creates a new problem. So just a little tip for you there. We'll continue. Well, it's taken the better part of a day to do it, but we got the first coat down along with the uh, material that provides the grit. And uh, I would say stick around to the end of the video and I'll give you some tips on do's and don'ts on how to do this, especially if you're doing a project of this size. Um, most all the videos I see, individuals are doing single or twin car garages, not 3,000 square feet. So this is definitely a DIY project. It can be done. We'll be back in the morning to put down coat number two. The end of day number two, we put the second coat on today. And while the first coat didn't look as good as I thought it would, it wasn't bad. Uh, we did come in to find bugs 
and a few uh, fish eye and a few other things in it, but that was easy enough to get out and easily was covered with the second coat. We'll come back tomorrow and do coat number three. This is the end of day three with the third coat being applied. It looks nice. Some of the waviness that you see in the picture is due to either irregularities in the concrete itself or with the distribution of some of the, uh, the grit that's in the material for traction, uh, just diffracting the light a little differently. But it's, yeah, in some cases like that, you see there's a little more. And here's the floor after we let the epoxy cure for several days. It looks nice. There are some areas that are a little slicker than others, and uh, you can see where we got some of the material down for traction, and that's all right. It'll be easy to spot things on this if we drop them and to keep it clean. Overall, very pleased. Three thousand square feet. It was a lot of work, but if we had to pay a professional to do this, it would have been at least four dollars minimum per square foot, which would be twelve thousand dollars. There's no way that was in my budget, including the rental of the equipment to resurface the concrete and the materials to do the epoxy. We spent approximately forty-two to forty-four hundred dollars. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. You can't tell it, but this is a little farther in the year. I didn't, wasn't able to get to the video to finish it up uh, in a timely manner like I really wanted to. That's why I'm wearing long sleeves now instead of a lot of short sleeves. And why, uh, while the shop, uh, rather than the thermometer showing 95 degrees like I showed earlier, uh, it's currently showing about 60. Some things I wanted to share with you real quick to kind of sum this up. Uh, it's probably a bit different if you're doing a lot smaller space, a one or two car garage. Uh, obviously it would be a lot different than 3,000 square feet. But uh, some things I wanted to share with you that I learned through the process. Number one, once you mix the color in the hardener, uh, the clock is ticking. You don't have time to piddle around. In my case, I found I had about 20 minutes to apply that gallon and a half of material to the floor before the consistency started changing. And once it does start to change, it changes quickly. So at, at about 20 minutes when it started to change, I just needed to dump it out and roll it out as quick as I could because once it starts getting tacky and sticky, it'll start messing up your roller. And at that point, you gotta pull it off and get another one, which kind of leads into another thing. The supplies that you need to do this with a lot of the rollers, whether it's an 18 inch roller, which I highly suggest because you cover a lot more area faster. Uh, whether it's an 18 inch roller, a little six inch one or four inch to do trim and uh, this touch up, most all your supplies that you need get extra. Uh, you don't wanna be in the middle of something and realize, oh, I need another roller. You don't have it and your material is mixed. It will screw things up. So get extra of whatever you think you might need double it if you have to you can always take those extra things back to the store and get your money back afterwards but you just don't want to be caught short while you're doing the project mixing time the manufacturer's instructions suggested three to five minutes of mixing i found that that was too long for me now that may have had to do with the amount of material we were using and the temperature and the humidity and that sort of thing I'm sure played into it. But I found that mixing it for about a minute was plenty. Once it was mixed, it's mixed. I mean, you're mixing two liquids. It's not gonna take three to five minutes to get those things to, uh, to mix together well. If it was a powder and a liquid maybe, but liquid to liquid, I didn't find that was necessary at all. I mentioned earlier in the video about the shoes. Uh, very important when you assemble them, the little uh, spike with the nut to use some thread locker on that spike. If you don't, I can practically guarantee you as you're walking around rolling and doing all this work, you're going to notice a nut or two or three, in my case, laying around. 
all because they start to loosen at the same time with the flexing of that, that sole. So do yourself a favor. Add When you put them together in the first place, add thread locker to the threads on that little spike, uh, and you will save yourself a lot of grief. Again, when you're in the middle of rolling, you don't have time to take care of another problem. You need to focus on what you're doing. So be sure and have some thread locker and duct tape. That's important as well. Uh, one size fits most everybody, but maybe not you. Your foot could be small, large, doesn't matter. The shoes, the spike shoes come in one size. So use that tape again. Once they're secure to your shoes and you're stable and walking around, that's one less thing you have to worry about. All you want to deal with is getting that product down as quickly as possible and make it look good. Preparing the surface. We used a, a concrete grinder. The first one I used, uh, I got from a local big box store. It had a single grinding blade. For a shop this size, that is way too small. It took me a couple of hours to grind an area about half the size of a vehicle. So use uh, get a bigger machine if you have a bigger project. In my case, I returned that machine, picked up a different one at a rent, uh, equipment rental store. It had two larger blades, and it went way faster. So that's a huge help. Uh, depends on your concrete, too. How new is it? In, case, in my case, mine was pretty new. Didn't have to do near as much. But if your garage is older, your concrete's a lot older, uh, you may need to spend more time grinding to get a lot of the stains and and junk that's in the concrete out so that the material will stick better. When it comes to adding that grit to the material to give you traction, a little goes a long way. With all the material I bought, uh, they suggested I needed six cans, which I think it's a, about a quart can. I needed six cans of this material. I used a can and a half, and that was more than enough. So. The way they suggest dispersing it is to take a handful and throw it up into the air, and that way the particles come down and kind of disperse evenly. Throw it on the ground like you're feeding chickens. You're going to have a massive buildup. It'll look terrible, and you'll have to scrape it up and redo that area. So don't do it that way. When you broadcast that material, it's a fine, fine grit. Throw it up in the air several feet over your head so that when it lands, it spreads out. And you don't need a whole lot. Uh, in my case, there, there are areas where I have more than I wanted. Uh, as far as traction, it works great. It still looks good. It would look better, I think, if I didn't have as much in it. It would be smoother. The flip side of that is when it's smooth, and if it gets wet, it's slick or nice. So having the traction is a good thing. Uh, we chose the color gray, a solid color, for a purpose. My previous garage had a gray base, but it had red, white, gray, and black flecks in it, and then a clear coat over it. Looked awesome. When working on a vehicle, if you drop a screw or a nut or bolt, whatever, you can't find it. It looks great, but you can't find squat. Uh, the gray, when you drop something, you can see it. You can get it. It's, you save a lot of time in chasing things you drop, which I do a lot. And it's easier to find the liquids and the spills and clean those things up as well. If you have a vehicle that's dropping a little bit of oil or a little bit of antifreeze, much easier to spot on a solid color than it is that multicolor. So if you have a garage and you just want it to look nice and you've got a nice car and you just want to keep it clean and you don't do a lot of work on it, the multicolored flex is great. If you do a lot of work on your car, I highly suggest a single color because you're going to spend a lot more time than you think looking for things that you drop. Uh, product is made in the USA. I was pleased about that. Uh, I guess last but not least, I would suggest once you pretty much finish your project, save a jar or a small can or whatever of the color and the hardener for future repairs. Uh, we've had, because that was put down early on, the electrician have been in. He's been all over the place with his guys. We've had scissor lifts in here, uh, dropping things from heights and stuff. And there are little nicks and scratches and stuff here and there that I'll go back later and I'll fix those. I've got some extra material. But if you use every, if you mix everything, use everything, throw away the, the excess, 
then in the future, if you scratch it or damage it in some way, you're not going to have material to touch it up. And in a case like this, if, uh, if there's a place where you've dropped something and scratched it, it can peel, literally. Once it's good and hard, it will peel. And if you get something under it, or if it's at the edge of a door, maybe where water can get under it or anything like that, that can create more problems than you want to do, really deal with. So just keep a little extra material around so that if you notice a damaged area, you can patch it up real easy and it won't be a problem for the future. Well, I hope you got something out of the video. The shop is coming along. I'm sorry I haven't been able to keep up with everything. There's been so many projects. It's very time consuming and it's additionally more time consuming to try to record every single thing we do. And so that's been difficult. But I am going to have another video out there shortly that will show uh, that electrical work's been done. We finished up the plumbing, uh, getting sheetrock up, getting septic in, doing those sorts of things to show you how the shop is coming along. We've cleared out an area, and we are starting to get some room to get the trucks in. And we've got a Jeep we're going on, and we have a Jeep we're going to work on as well uh, in the future for a project. Uh, but for now... That's all I've got for you. Thanks for hanging around. Thanks for sticking through and hanging with me. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. See you in the next video.